In this video, we're going to be talking about forms in Jira Service Management. If you've never used a form in JSM, then you're going to want to pay attention to this video because this is actually a really cool feature that I don't use that much, but it's actually a really powerful feature and you're going to want to know about it. Do you get many customer requests in languages that your agents can't speak? Then Language Translations for JSM by our good friends over at Resolution is the perfect app for you. It allows you to leave a great impression on your customers without having to hire folks to speak every specific language that your customers speak. Check it out in the marketplace. And oh, by the way, there's a 20% discount in the description down below. So make sure you use that when you start your trial. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Drop a like if you get value out of this video. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, let me know in the comment section down below. And when you're down there, do make sure you check out all the different links in the description so you can find out how you can support this channel. Let's jump into JSM and talk about these magical forms. Now, I do want to start this video off by telling you that you need to be in Jira Service Management. This is not going to work in Jira software. This kind of works in Jira Work Management, but that's a different topic for a different video for a different day. So today we're going to be focusing inside of Jira Service Management, and I'm going to show you how to create a very simple form and how these work and give you a couple of pointers to be able to basically determine whether you should be using forms or if you should be using this portal the way the portal is designed. Okay, so in order to do this, you are gonna to wanna to be a project level administrator and you're gonna to wanna to go to project settings down here. Now, when you're down here, most of the time you go and create a request type by clicking on request type. But today we're gonna to click on forms and we're gonna go and create a form and I'm gonna kind of walk you through the interface and show you what's available here. So when you click on forms, you're gonna be redirected to this like form creator. You're gonna to wanna to click on create form up here and you have two options. You can either create a form from a template or you can create from blank. Now, I don't have a specific preference here. I think if this is the very first time you're creating a form, you should definitely check out the templates, which is what we're gonna do in this video. But if you're a seasoned vet and you know what you're doing here, then you're probably just gonna to wanna to start with the blank canvas and define the form however you want. But let's go take a look at the templates so that we can kind of explore this together. So when I do that, you're going to see that there's 217 different templates. So clearly Atlassian has put a lot of thought and effort into this. Now there's templates for attending a conference, com conference notes, meeting notes, SWOT analysis, retrospective, project poster, and refund request. But at this point, you're probably asking yourself, what the heck is a form? Well, a form is essentially like a Google form, if you've ever used one, right? It's just like a survey. It's information that you're going to collect from users. And so these forms are basically pre-designed for you. So let's just go with like a phone equipment order. We're going to preview this so you can see what this looks like, right? And as I said, it's basically just a survey. It's a pre-structured form that's going to collect important information with respect to what that temp is trying to achieve. So in this case, we're trying to do a foreign order equipment. So we're going to capture things like your name, your job title, your phone, your email, department and call center. But then we're going to ask specific questions to telephones that are going to be important to actually fulfill this request. And so you can see you have time frame and things of this nature and comments. So for the simplicity's sake, we're just going to click on select and we're going to use this as our form. Now this is the form and as you can see, this looks and feels a little bit like Confluence and you can do a lot of really cool things in here. And so you can just accept this form as it is. There's nothing else you got to do. If you want to use this form, all you got to do is go to your settings and add it to your request form here. And then you can choose the request type that you want this to fall under. So that does go to say that you do need to recreate your request types before you come and create your form. Or you can just simply have the form available when you hit create new issue. Again, the request types there. Or you can recommend in an issue. Again, you got to select the request type there. So that's what the three options that you have. But once you pick which option it is, then you're going to essentially then make it available so that your teams can fill it out. So I'm just going to add it to my request form and I'm just going to randomly pick this computer support one. I know it doesn't make sense, but again, you would actually architect this and build this better. I'm just trying to show you how the form works. Okay. So when you're in the actual form editor, all you need to do is figure out what information do you want to capture? Obviously these are starting points. If you don't have a department, you can simply click on it, rename it. So maybe you're, maybe you're looking at location, right? You can add a description to this where you live. And you could also put in a pre-filled answer if you wanted to. 
Now you don't have to, I wouldn't recommend it because people might accidentally just fill out the forms with that data in it. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend that you put pre-filled answers. Now, one thing that I did skip over is the type. These are the different types of fields that you can add. So you have short text, long text, paragraph, email, URL. You also have radio buttons, check boxes, drop downs, multi-select drop downs, dates, times, only times, date and times and only times, number, single user, multi-user. So basically a lot of the same things that we see in these custom fields. Remember, if your agents need to engage in conversations with customers that don't speak their native language, you can make everyone's lives easier with language translations for JSM. And it's not just about the translations. You can build cues for customers by language or simply automate assignments so that your specific language speakers are automatically given that specific ticket based on their specific language. Check it out in the Atlassian Marketplace and don't forget that there's a 20% code in the description down below. But there's one key difference between the form and the custom fields and the portal, which is a typical route to go down with the JSM project. And that is in order to capture new information, in order to capture like new field data, you need to be a site level admin or a Jira admin in order to then be able to go create those custom fields and then to be able to add those custom fields into the screens, which then are added to your portal or to your request type. That is complicated. So what Atlassian did with these forms is, well, let's just open it up to the project level admin, which is the lowest level of admin, and they can have some creative freedom to create these forms without having to bug or hinder their Jira administrators. So this is a win for the user, not so much for the Jira admin. Now it's not all rainbows and unicorns here. There is a significant drawback, at least to my, from my experience, and do please, if I am wrong, please let me know in the comment section down below. This is my suspicion. I haven't had a chance to confirm it 100%, but I wanted to basically throw this out there, right? But when you create a form, when you utilize the form inside of your JSM portal, that data is encapsulated to the form. So you can still view the data, but it's gonna be encapsulated. You're not gonna be able to do JQLs on that form data because they're locked to that form. Versus when you go down the custom field route, all of these are fields and you're gonna be able to search and do your queues and do JQLs and filters and dashboards. And you're gonna be able to do basically everything you can in a Jira project with those custom fields. But again, it has a lot more overhead. So you gotta balance that out. You gotta figure out, do you want simplicity of the form and be able to add the data, but then the data has to be viewed in the issue? Or do you want the customization and power of Jira, but now you have to have the right privilege or, or at least know somebody with the right privilege to be able to create these customizations. So there's a dichotomy there that you do gotta balance out and figure out and essentially figure out should, is the form the right route or is the doing the custom fields and the request type the right route. I personally still only go with the custom fields, but this form one is actually really popular. And so the cool thing that you can do is that you can basically in between all this data, you can add sections. And when you add sections, you can give them a name, some section, and you can determine if it always shows or if it conditionally shows. And what this means is that you could essentially show a bunch of fields and then based on some condition, show a different set of fields. So anyways, this was a quick overview of how these forms work. Go and create your forms and then all you gotta do is make sure you go to your settings, add it to the right request type, and then when your team goes to the portal and they select that request type, that portal is not gonna be visible and they're gonna be able to use it. Getting tickets in Arabic, Chinese, or Spanish? No problem. With language translation for JSM, your agents will engage with your customers as if they were natives. Simply install the app from the Atlassian Marketplace and define your project default language and go. Oh, and while you're doing that, make sure you check out the description down below because our good friends over at Resolution have provided us with a 20% discount that you can use when you sign up for language translation for JSM. Don't miss this chance they only have a few left. If you did enjoy this video, do let, make sure you let me know by either liking this video or let me know in the comment section down below so that I can do more advanced videos for the forms. If you haven't already, please also consider subscribing. Let me remind you that this video is part of the Summer of Atlassian 2.0 series, which means we're trying to hit 10,000 subscribers. We're almost there, not quite, but we can get there if you take a second here to smash the subscribe button, which is totally free for you. And finally, if you want to find out all the different ways that you can help support the channel, make sure you check out all the links in the description down below. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next one. I love the chase and the hunt, and I set the pace when I'm running. I always take what I want, and I always give it 100. Don't need